amount of pi. Um, mm-hmm. So let me ask you this, because I'm super curious. A lot of agents that I see struggle out of the business. I'll, obviously, I've only been in the business eight months. But when you think about it, when I what I've seen over the time is agents struggle with shiny objects, right? Shiny object, this, this lead, this company, this whatever, right? This product, whatever it is, the CRM, you experience shiny objects to like a billion times more than what we're facing, right? Like you, you, you think, you think about it for us, like, it's like, oh, a $10,000 deal, like a a gig or whatever, like a shiny object, maybe a hundred thousand, but you're dealing like with a billion dollar, like of money or whatever, right? Those shiny objects. How do you stay focused? Because obviously you stayed in your lane, you stayed in the life insurance field. There's had to have been so many shiny objects along the, along the way. How do you dial in when it's the, the object that you you could look at is way more shiny than agents? Yeah, um, great question. I think a couple things. When you're struggling, because um, – what happens to most of us is we just don't, it, it's like you get punched in the face, right? And then most of us are like, well, then I need to do something else. I'm like, no, not necessarily. You're probably close to where you need to be. That's just part of the business. And what I always did, Johnny, was whatever went wrong was my fault. Accountability eliminates this shiny object thing. Because if you're accountable for your success, Johnny, a lead's a lead's a lead. It's not they. I changed the way I spoke. I didn't say they don't buy. They're the clients are not they. If I make a mistake, I used to do a training. I take this whiteboard. I draw a lead. I'd be like Tom and Susan at their house by themselves. Fill this out. No promise of anything. No financial incentive. They send it back. And then we introduce you, Johnny. And they magically don't want life insurance. Who's the variable? It ain't it ain't Tom and Susan. It's you. Yeah. Every time I didn't close, it was my fault. It didn't matter who they were. Everybody can afford it. They live in America. They have a cell phone. They have a residence. They probably have a car. They can afford it. So when you start thinking about, I only focused on what I can control. And I used to tell people early on, because I had a lot of guys that are big, as you put it, shiny object guys. I was like, the new idea department is closed. We have something simple we're running. We don't need a new idea every 12 minutes. We need to get enough leads. We have plenty of clients. There's a huge, I mean, there's millions of licensed agents out there and hundreds of millions of people. So you'll get a company that has, that does, I mean, our volume's large. Our volume is much larger than any IMO, NMO, FMO that I, that, that's out there. And that's okay. Yeah. But, but there's a huge, there's a huge pie, right? As you said. So when you look at us, we could grow by 10X and it wouldn't be a big deal. Like it would be 60,000 agents. Like it wouldn't be that big deal because there's millions of agents and hundreds of millions of Americans. You could start doing 30, 40, 50, 60 million a year, and it wouldn't be that big a deal. I mean, it'd be a big deal. Like, I'd be proud of you, but the world wouldn't, like, Forbes is not going to write an article on you. The world's not, uh, we're not going to be Elon Musk. I mean, we're going to be doing something that's amazing. So I think you have to make a commitment to stay focused, right? And my rule was if you can't control it, don't focus on it. Um, This lead sucks. Okay, the lead doesn't suck. How long do you dial in it? And here's the thing, with the right attitude, you'll convert any lead. Because here's a truism in the industry. The newer the lead, the more expensive it is. Direct mail, you'd say is better quality. I don't argue it. It's new. It's more expensive. Yeah. These ones are cheaper. So either way, it's an economy. It all adds up. You just got to put in more. You just got to decide what you want to do. And it depends on what your budget is, right? And then your attitude. We spend way too much time doing X's and O's. You know, yeah. like when I coached, one of the things I realized, did you play ball growing up, Johnny? Yeah, I did. What'd you play? Basketball. Basketball. Were you a point yeah. guard, shooting guard? Shooting guard. Yeah. Shooting guard. Okay. Yeah. So for me, when I finally, and I, I educated myself on the game, but I always said, it's weird. When the game was close to the end, timeout stuff, I never played. I played football and baseball. Played both in high school, went to college and played in both. Like, but basketball, I played in high school for fun. I hated it. I was never involved. All my job was to screen, box out, and get the ball to Mike and or to Scott. That's it. My job was never to take and put it back up unless I was like standing right underneath the hoop. Does that make sense? So I yeah. really didn't know a lot about it. But when we started playing these travel teams and playing, we traveled all over New England, the biggest thing I worked on, Johnny, was the attitude with the kids. You're going to walk into a hostile environment. People are going to try to get inside your head unlike any other sport because you have closer contact. Yeah, They're going to do a lot of this. It doesn't matter. You don't stand there when you're warming up, staring at the other team. 
Whoever, who are we playing today, coach? Whoever shows up on the other bench. If they show up on the other bench and they have different jerseys than us, that's who we're playing against. Who gives a damn if LeBron James kid shows up? Whoever's here is who we're going to play. Yeah. And I think we got to talk to ourselves like that and get our minds right in this business. This yeah. is an amazing business. But if your mind's wrong, you'll screw it up. And listen, it's great to read books. It's great to go to meetings. It's great to do all that. And it is. Yeah. But what you have to do, you you got to spend a lot of time getting tougher internally. That external motivation will wear off. It has to come from inside. When you get the internal motivation where you're like, okay, so what? They said no. So what? They said no four times in a row, seven times in a row, 12 times in a row. It doesn't matter because, as you said earlier, you'll start pushing. You never know when you hit that pot of gold. You just don't. I mean, there were so many times in our business the first three or four years that were like, man, we could have been out of business. We had one insurance carrier when we started. We had one, one insurance carrier. Nobody in the business wanted us to have any carriers. They didn't want us to compete with them, which is like, dude, what are you afraid about competing? So we had one. They were different than they were today. They didn't have all the options. They didn't issue, but it was what we had. So what you do when you learn to live, it's like if you grow up with no money, you learn to figure it out. If you grow up with no car, you walk and take the bus. If you lose one leg, I mean, there are people that lose, they got one arm and they play, you know, Division One college basketball. They yeah. have one hand and play professional baseball. They can't see out of one eye and they do. So I think a lot of us just have to have perspective. And I'll, I'll, every day I woke up in the morning, I said this to myself, 155,000 people, this was 10, 12 years old, may have changed. But I was in a meeting and a guy said 155,000 people die on average every day. If you woke up, you weren't one of them. And I'm always like, I'm blessed. I'm ahead of the game. And, dude, I think it's disrespectful to start whining, complaining, moaning. Because what causes you to look for new shiny objects is the pity party. The pity party is followed by, oh, Tom's got a better lead. That's obviously why it'll work better for me. Oh, he's in that area. I always love that. Oh, uh, you do really well, Sean. Um, is it the area? I'm like, no, I'm just better than you. <laughs> I'm just better than you. No, I, I used to tell people all the time, no, I'm just, I work harder than you. I'm just better than you. No, it's not the lead. Give me a piece of a napkin with a name on it, and I'll sell it. Like as, long as they need, like as long as they can get life insurance, and they know they need life insurance, they haven't taken care of it already. So I think it's that you have to get a, you have to get a thickness of skin and a really tough mental attitude, which will allow you to be successful. And by the way, most shiny object ideas come from people that aren't doing anything. Stop talking to people that don't do anything. Those hallway seminar people that want to be talked to. So they don't sit in the meeting. They sit outside and pontificate. All you got to do is go, here's a leaderboard. We used to carry the leaderboard with us, Johnny, in our back pocket, my old company. We would carry it. It would be like the top 600 agents. So we'd be like, we have this. Where are you on here? What name is yours? And if they weren't on it, they were told to leave us alone. <laughs> 